Good morning, students. Um, and today we're going to be talking about multiplication. This would be an introductory video. And this is 4 a.m., but I promise you guys a video on this, especially for the bootcamp refreshes that we have on Friday and Sunday. Because this is an intro topic, I want to make sure you guys understand and you guys have this video to refer back to. So let's talk about multiplication. Oh, I'm not mic'd, so in case the audio isn't the best, I still want to get this video out as fast as possible. So multiplication is basically a quick way of adding the same number over and over and over again. So guys, once you guys could add, that's it. That's Avengers Endgame right there. You guys will be able to multiply. So obviously, let's launch into example just to show this, right? So let's just say you guys have a party. And for the party, the parents promise you guys KFC. You do real good in tests. You come first. So your mom's like, all right, so going to call up KFC and order some KFC. So um, your mom orders 10 boxes of KFC, obviously spicy, obviously with fries and extra ketchup. And each piece, each box, so each box has three pieces of chicken, right? Uh, I guess definitely you want probably drumstick, center breast, thigh. Come on, those wings are so small. Like, why? Why would you want those wings? So what could we do? Okay, so in the olden days, before we started to talk about multiplication, and guys, this is just an introductory video. This is for our smallest kids, standards two, standards three, um, on Friday and Sunday classes, right? So in olden days, what would what we would do would basically say, okay, we have 10 boxes. Each box has three pieces of chicken. So what could we do? We could say three plus three plus three plus three plus three, because remember, we have 10 boxes. So we have all of this, um, pretend they, they bring it, they put it on the table, you get one of those tables from Price Mart, so the white, the white tables, the four by six tables, and we have all of these boxes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, plus three, plus three, plus three, plus three. You guys can see where I go in here, right? Why we need multiplication so badly in our lives. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So <laughs> we add all of these and we will get them. Um, three plus three, six, six plus three, nine, nine plus three, 12, 12 plus three, 15, 15 plus three, 18, 18 plus three, 21, 21 plus three, 24, 24 plus... 24 plus 3, 27, 27 plus 3 equals to 30 pieces of finger licking good Kentucky Fried Chicken from Gulfview Branch. Although I think Davy Branch, you get bigger pieces though, but that traffic there is brutal. So, <laughs> you guys see, this is one alternative and just like what we, what we were talking about when we talked about place value, humans had to come up with a better way to do this sort of this task. Otherwise, this would take us forever, especially when we start to deal with larger numbers, much larger numbers. So instead of saying 10 boxes of KFC, right, and we have three pieces in each box, we can actually say 10 boxes multiplied by three pieces of chicken per box. And that will actually give us 30 which is the same exact answer over here. Notice this little thing here is kind of like if you take a plus sign and you like bop it on your head and you like fall to the side. This is called the multiplication sign. So this is equal to multiplication. And multiplication, like I said before, is just a quick way of adding the same number over and over and over again. One of the first places you guys would actually see multiplication, um, especially in the school system here, would be in your times tables. Again, times tables, a lot of teachers, like, they want you to learn it by heart, but um, I believe in once you understand how times tables are made, then you wouldn't really need to learn it by heart, although it helps, especially in the heat of exams, when you guys have end of term exam, SE exam, and things like that, um, it will help you a lot. So, um, they usually start at 2 times, actually, no, let's start at the beginning. 
one times table also. So one times one equals one, two times one equals two, three times one equals three. And what we actually will learn here is something that's kind of cool. Multiplication has laws. Like, you know how we in Trinidad and Tobago, we have laws. What was one of the most recent laws that we actually passed? We passed that we have to wear masks when we're outside. So we have to follow those laws. Otherwise, we could get charged, which would be bad because $1,000 could buy a lot of KFC and McDonald's and all of those other finger licking good pizzas and all of those cool things. So this one times table actually leads us to something called the I. Identity property of multiplication. The identity property of multiplication. And what that tells us is if you multiply any number by one, it gives you the number that you multiplied. And this is cool. I mean, you might this might be actually part of a section three question but let me just show you if we have and this is the simplest example you will never get this example for SCA exam but it will come as a multiple part question so if we have question mark multiply by 141 will give us 141 well the first thing is this question mark is equal to one right or if we rephrase that 141, uh, sorry, if we rephrase that, um, where is that eraser thingy? If we have, okay, get back to the pencil, bubble, yay, whoa, okay, good. If we have question mark multiplied by one, which will give us 141, then we know question mark is equal to 141. So in the event that we have a fill in the blanks question and we have the same, same, same exact number, and it, or it is multiplied by one, then we know that number itself is the product. Now, we have to learn a little bit of uh, um, names. And what I mean by names is what do we call parts of a multiplication um, problem itself? So we said we had 10 boxes of KFC, and we basically had three pieces of KFC chicken in each box. And the answer to that is 30, right? So how do we name this? And again, this is, once you know how to do it, I'm totally okay with you guys. However, um, if in class or if in the question itself, they ask you for the name of it, I want you guys to know this. So remember, we do every single thing. We don't assume you guys know anything. At Elite Educators, we make sure and teach so that you would 100% get all marks. So what we have here is the name for this one is called the multiplicand multiplicand and this one here is called the multiplier what you're actually multiplying by and what we have here is known as the product the most important part of this here is straight up the product i just want you guys to learn this because the thing is in the european system of education yes they say multiplicand and they say multiplier but in the american system they just call these two things here factors right so we have two different factors and when we multiply the factors by each other we would get the product and this method is one that I actually like because think about it. If you go to Superfarm and you buy products, um, those products are bought where? In factories. So factors multiply together to form that product. So I just want you guys to learn product. Product is basically when you multiply two numbers you and you get the answer. That itself will be the product itself, which is super cool. Um, today, I'll just focus on one digit multiplication when we multiply a number by one digit. And then in another video, we'll do two digits by two digits, three digits by three digits. And I will pepper in some of those epic mental maths thingies that I teach at my conferences for free because you guys are our students. So um, let's just start. So again, um, I want you guys to like kind of make sure just make sure and understand your times tables. We'll actually talk a little bit about it. So two times tables would basically be one by two will be two, two multiplied by two will be four, 
3 multiplied by 2 will give us 6. And th this is what we're going to lead into. We're going to lead into the other portion, the other rule, another law. So remember, we said the first law was the identity the identity property or the identitative law of multiplication. When we multiply by one, we'll get the number itself. The second law is called the commutative property of multiplication. Ooh, so much big words. So early in the morning, haven't had my cup of tea. Lipton tea, best thing since last bread. All right, so we're going to talk about the commutative property of whoops, what the, of multiplication, yes, my handwriting sucks, it is 4 a.m., <laughs> um, so the commutative property or commutative law of multiplication is this, so remember, we talked about, um, if we multiply, like, um, if we multiply 4 by 4, right, or if we multiply 4 by 2, and we get 8, we see, these here are the factors, and this is the product. Product, products are made in factories, but factors. <laughs> what we mean um, with the commutative law is basically that no matter how we multiply them, right? So we have 4 multiplied by 2, that'll give us 8. And if we have 2 multiplied by 4, it will also give us 8. So, guys, it does not matter at all, at all, at all. So, okay, think about it. Again, KFC. It's for like luck anymore. I can't think of any other examples. Okay, no. Let's think of the next example. Let's talk about uh, um, if you have a bag of marbles. I was actually surprised that a student knew what marbles was because back in my days, when I was in grand school, that was a realist. That's all we had. Now, students have iPads and Amazon tablets and Samsung A10s. And like that, okay, so we'll say we have a bag, and the bag has, so in this example, 4 multiplied by 2 will give you 8. We have a bag with 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 marbles in it, right? And put a circle around it. Oh, that looks like a button. <laughs> then we have another bag with 1, 2, 3, 4, and we have 4 marbles in it. And when we multiply them, so we have 2 bags with 4, we get 8. However, let's use this other example. Let's say we have a bag with two marbles in it. So we have one, two, boom. We have a next bag, boom. We have a next bag, boom. We have a next bag. And four multiplied by two will give us eight. And that is known as the commutative property of multiplication. And why is this important? This is important because not all functions in maths um, have this property, right? Because remember, we have addition, which we did like two weeks ago. We have subtraction, which we have multiplication, and we have division. So this law does not hold true for all of them. Because think about it like this, right? So we have 4 multiplied by 2 is, will give you 8. 2 multiplied by 4 will give you 8. What about subtraction? Subtraction is so easy. But let's look at it. If we have 4 minus 2, that will give us 2, right? But in a commutative law, it says that you could flip around the numbers. What happens when we flip around the numbers? Ooh, you guys see? 2 minus 4 will give us negative 2. Because you only had 2 um, Hagen dazs Belgian chocolate, small ice creams, and people want 4. So, you owe them two Hagen dazs Belgian chocolate ice creams. In this case, we have four Belgian chocolate Hagen dazs ice creams. And one Belgian chocolate Hagen dazs ice creams now. And we minus two Belgian chocolate Hagen dazs ice creams. And now we have two. So, the commutative law, it does not apply to this, to subtraction. So, that is why. Oh, um, one more thing before we go. Right? And remember, guys, we still have a little bit of space in the Bootcamp Refresh where we start from the very, very, very beginning. You guys could always get us at, uh, um, in my case, 486-6450, that's me, Adrian, or 750-5683, and that's Miss Aruna. And we are elite educators. Well, we are just the main people, but there are other people too. Elite educators. 
and our job is to hack the SEA syllabus and make sure you guys are prepared. So last but not least, we are going to talk about the zero multi zero property or the zero law of multiplication. So the zero and guys, remember, this video is for standard twos and standard threes. This is for the babies. Um, we have more advanced videos for um, standard fives, plus we have form ones to threes um, in terms of indie size and chemistry and stuff like that. But zero property of multiplication. And it is exactly what it says. Um, and this is this is a common trick that people usually do. This is like one of those brain teasers. So what I would probably start off a class, I'll be like, guys, what is 142 divided by divided by eight um, plus 312 multiplied by 32 multiplied by zero? And all of that doesn't matter because if you multiply anything by zero, it becomes zero. So we could multiply 10 by zero and it will be zero. We could multiply 15, no, 150 by zero and it will be zero. So basically, if we multiply any number with zero, the product becomes, it is zero. So multiply a number with zero and the product Remember, product basically is answer equals answer equals zero. So we can have the most complicated thing in the world. We could be like 1,431 divided by 4 plus 839 um, minus 84 multiplied by zero. And the answer is zero. Z-E-R-O. Sure, we have a lot more, but this video, what? What was the 17 minutes? Bruh, bruh. No wonder we need all of the classes to be two hours or more. We have classes for two hours and, well, we tend to go a bit overboard because, well, we want students to learn. We'll actually be implementing a system of breaks in between the class so students will get a chance to, like, recap, but we do everything. We do the full ELE syllabus, we do the maths, we do past paper revision, and we do creative writing, which would be two types of um, expository or report writing or narrative. So we train your students to be the very best, just like the Pokemon team song says. <laughs> All right, guys, have an awesome day. It is 4.22 a.m. Be safe. Take care.